Elizabeth Holmes founded Theranos in 2003. After dropping out of Stanford University, the 19-year-old led a team of researchers united by a simple vision to revolutionize the healthcare industry using new groundbreaking technology. Theranos claimed it had developed a device that could conduct a full range of laboratory tests from a tiny finger prick sample of blood. Gone were the days of taxing doctor visits, syringes, and laboratories. Instead, the Minilab, codenamed Edison, promised to become a staple of preventative care, able to detect the onset of diseases early and affordably. Theranos assembled a powerful board and high-profile investors, including former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger and U.S. Senator Bill Frist. At its height, Theranos was a media darling, valued at $9 billion. Elizabeth Holmes appeared on the covers of Fortune, Forbes, and Business Week. The story of the company's rise became Silicon Valley legend, but so did its fall from grace. What the public and many investors didn't realize is that internally the company was in major trouble. Theranos claimed to be able to perform 240 tests in its mini lab, but employees knew that Edison could only reliably perform 15 tests. The rest were done on competitors' machines. When demonstrating the technology to potential investors, they'd take a blood sample, invent a reason to lead the visitors elsewhere, and then deceptively and quickly run the tests at a different lab. Drowning in development costs, Theranos began to offer testing to the public through a contract with Walgreens in 2010. But when Walgreens representatives visited the Theranos offices to view their processes and ask them to perform simple tests, they were rejected. And even though numerous Walgreens executives had their own blood drawn, no results were given for their samples. An October 2015 Wall Street Journal article reported blood was being diluted and results were being faked. In 2016, Walgreens ended its relationship with Theranos, and the Journal of Clinical Investigation found significant discrepancies in Edison's test results. By 2018, the company shut down and federal investigation revealed extensive fraud that endangered the health and lives of many. Today, Holmes continues to deny a dozen felony counts, facing 20 years in prison and up to $2.75 million in fines. But a major ethical question remains. Since Theranos never made good on any of its claims during its entire run, how did it survive for 15 years? What factors silenced doubters for so long and drove high-profile investors to keep the money flowing? To learn more, read Theranos. How did a $9 billion health tech startup end up DOA? By Ernesto Dalbo and Wo Shu, published by the Berkeley Haas K-Series.